The 40-year-old Center for Policy Research, a Delhi-based think tank, had its license that allows it to get funding from outside India suspended for six months. The CPR was also surveyed about five months ago by the income tax authorities and today, after the action, claimed they had done no wrong. Now, this headline is not only about CPR and the violation of the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, that's the FCRA. There is much more to it. The government has been cracking down on non-profit organizations for a while now. Last year, the license of think tank Oxfam was suspended. Before that, it was Greenpeace. There are, in fact, several other NGOs that have run afoul of government regulation. The BJP says these non-profits have violated the laws. The opposition says the government is cracking down on those who are critical of their policies. But the CPR case has another angle to it. That's the George Soros angle. American billionaire George Soros was in the headlines two weeks ago for taking a dig at the Modi government over the Adani controversy. This think tank CPR has a Soros link and here's how it goes. The website of CPR lists as among its donors one Namati Inc, a US-based company. The website of Namati Inc shows among its donors the Open Society Foundation. This organization has been founded by Mr. Soros. So is this action payback for Soros's comments? Should it be looked at in the larger context? Before we get to all of that, let me go across to my colleague Madhav, who's breaking down the reasons for this particular clampdown. Well, any which way you look at it, it is a massive development because the Center for Policy Research is just no other ordinary think tank. It is a think tank that, uh, you know, has been pretty much at the forefront of uh, policy making or at least uh, uh, analysis as far as policy making uh, field is concerned uh, in India for a good part of the last several decades. Now, it is a fact that uh, through the Namati Inc. Uh, uh, company, there has been donations, which in turn is funded by George Soros's Open uh, Society Foundation. And yes, that could be an issue of concern as far as the government is concerned. Although for these 180 days, the reason, the exact cause of this FCRA license suspension uh, by the government has not very clearly been spelled out. All we know is the statement that has come from the Central Policy Research side says that their accounts uh, are scrutinized by not just general auditors but also have been scrutinized by the CNAG in the past and that all of their balance sheets and other documents are there in the public domain and therefore they are denying that in any way they have violated the law or any kind of audit rules when it comes to India is concerned. Now, this is the statement of the Center for Policy Research. The government for its own part has been extremely vocal when it comes to George Soros and his Open Society Foundation. We have uh, seen how, and the government has quoted how in the past, George Soros has been an extremely controversial figure, you know, working towards regime change uh, in different parts of the world. It's not just here in India where his sites have been and his organizations have been trying to target the current regime but it has happened several times over in different countries across uh, uh, continents, across decades. So that being the background, it's uh, really the stage set up for a massive controversy. Of course, we had seen even last year when the raids had taken place in September 2022. At that time itself, it was being seen as extremely controversial because, uh, you know, the large number of luminaries from different fields, from former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to former Chief Justice uh, Chandrachud, uh, very many, uh, you know, people who are known figures have been a associated with the Center for Policy Research. And that's what makes this entire uh, think tank perhaps a little apart from other think tanks in the country. Of course, if there have been violations, we're still waiting to hear from the government on the specifics of what kind of violations have taken place, which has necessitated this kind of FCRA uh, license suspension, albeit uh, for only 180 days at the moment. All right, thank you for that, Madhav. I think we should take a minute to uh, talk about what FCRA is and its antecedents. So the FCRA Act is an outcome of the emergency years. That context is important. And its original purpose was to deter the foreign hand from influencing Indian policy through money, through donations. It was amended twice in 2010 and 2020, so by both the UPA and the NDA, and has been used to regulate all foreign donations to associations, groups and NGOs. 
any of these entities have to get a license from the government to receive foreign funds and there are conditions to be fulfilled. These licenses can be suspended or even cancelled if the rules are flouted. But one of the criteria for this also is if it's necessary in public interest to cancel a license. That decision is, of course, with the government. So why has the CPR's license been cancelled? Like Madhav said, we're still waiting for those um, details to come in, that what the specific violation is. In the interim, these are some of the questions. Are non-profits being targeted for critical views? Are there valid claims of violations of FCRA rules? Should non-profits be more transparent on funding? Is action connected to George Soros's remarks? To speak on this and more, I'm joined today by Karan Varma, author, Anurag Naidu, who's also an author. Uh, Kamru Zama Chaudhary is joining me on the show. He's a political analyst and Madhavan Narayanan, senior journalist, also with me on the show. Welcome to all of you and thank you so much for speaking with us. Madhavan, let me begin with you and your take, specifically why the action on CPR is raising so many eyebrows. I've attempted to explain the legacy that CPR has with it. But has CPR, in your view, been critical of this government? Yeah, I think it's important to understand that it's not just about criticality. By advocacy standards, I think CPR is quite mild because it is full of heavy-duty researchers and writers who are not really in your face in what they do. But so my suspicion, uh, Tamana, based on what you just put out, is that it might have a George Soros angle. but the significance of CPR is, uh, in every term, uh, very significant, as in uh, it's no, it's not just another NGO or think tank. I have personally gone to the CPR building to meet none other than Raj Mohan Gandhi, who used to be a senior fellow there, is a grandson of Mahatma Gandhi and uh, Rajagopal Achari, and one of the most prolific biographers and authors on Gandhism and Gandhian values. And uh, many very respectable senior bureaucrats, retired IAS officers have been in the CPR, not to speak of academicians. And uh, therefore, this is CPR, I would argue, is probably India's most uh, high profile think tank outside okay. of any university. And that is very important. And uh, the other thing is that it has always been. In fact, there was a time when I used to hear that Center for Policy Research is the Indian government's think tank. It wasn't seen was as that, foreign was that Was that in the UPA years? Uh, yes, long long before UPA. This, you could be calling it during the United Front years when Deva Gowda was the prime minister. Uh, it has been okay. throughout. It is not associated with any one political party. It is like okay. this, it's full of retired IS officers and academicians. But the thought process has been very significantly influenced by uh, a very modern free thinking approach. And if any hardline nationalists have a problem with that, that is what we should be discussing today. <laughs> okay, Karan Varma, I'm going to ask you to come in on that. Is there a problem of quote unquote, as Madhavan says, hardline nationalists? Is this a sort of a uh, revenge action for George Soros's comments, and we've explained that link quite clearly. It's a you know third cousin removed kind of link. Uh, George mm -hmm. Soros's foundation has invested in a uh, entity which has invested or is not invested actually is a donor to CPR. Is that the issue here? Well, it could be the issue, and rightly so, in my humble opinion. And I don't know what is hardline nationalist, but let me just say this. Let me quote our Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, who said that back in 2012, he said this, that the nuclear project in Tamil Nadu is being stalled by NGOs which have anti-Indian interests at heart. So this is the Prime Minister, the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh coming up. 2014, Tamanna, there was an IB report which said that NGOs, foreign funded NGOs, which do not have India's best interests at heart, are costing us 3% in our GDP. 
I'll give you two examples. Citizens for Green Dune, they tried their best to stall the widening of the expressway, the Chardham Expressway, which was a strategic one in the sense that it was required to send our ammunition and to send our patrolling troops at a crucial location in China. So let's not kid ourselves when we say this, there are foreign funded NGOs and yes, Open Society Foundation have, wears its heart on its sleeves. It clearly says it was responsible for the Arab uh, Spring. It is clearly, it clearly wants to topple the regime here in India. And if there are links like these, and if there are violations of the FCRA, I, I don't see any hardline nationalism in it, but only pragmatic nationalism in this. That this must be investigated. No, but Let's are you are you putting CPR in the same? No, no, are you putting CPR, CPR in the same category? One minute. Are you putting CPR in the same category? which has its roots and antecedents very much in India. So, so do you mean to say, Tamanna, that any Indian, any person in India always, let's assume, has good interests of India at heart? There are some Trojan horses. Let's, let's be real about it. We had, a former, we had a former home minister who said Hindu terror. We have a Mani Shankar Ayer who talks about bringing back Article 370. He goes to Pakistan and says, Modi ji ko hatane mein hamari madad kariye. So we have all sorts of Indians also. Let's be rational about it. We could have some Trojan horses. America describes them as Trojan horses. I am not casting as Persians on any one particular individual, but surely we need to be cautious about this. Now that we know what George Soros wants, right. and there is an Open Society Foundation, as you rightly pointed out, link to it, it must be under the scanner. That's all I'm saying. Okay, Madhavan Narayan wants to quickly rebut. Madhavan yeah, Narayan I'll, wants to quickly yeah. rebut. Yes. I think what we saw from Karan Verma just now is an example of what I call hardline nationalism. Because the Constitution <laughs> of India very clearly, right in it, a uh, preamble says there's a, a liberty of thought, freedom, you know, thought, belief, expression, faith, and worship. And the Rig Veda says, Ano Bhadraha Kritavo Yantu Vishwataha. Let noble thoughts come to us from our sides. So nationalism, this whole talk of Trojan horse, this feudalistic, noble. old, ancient, royalist thinking. It's not modern democratic thinking where you can get okay. thoughts from anywhere on earth. It is for us to debate. The citizens, we the people, will freely discuss sure. any idea right. and come to a conclusion. No individual. But not so if any, so anyone. Sir. The, con the constitution. No, no. But, but one minute. Right. You're talking about Soras. I want to put some no, facts no, out. No, I want Tamana. to put some facts out. One minute, Karan. Before you respond, I want to put some facts out because we are focusing Tamana, this on, and you're rebut, focusing please. on. Okay. No, just, okay. just one second, Karan. Because you know your your okay. rebut. I tell you, will be more illuminated after more that I put out. Uh, we are talking about one of many donors, which is Namati Inc which has one of many donors as George Soros's right. Open Society Foundation. I just want to read out the list of other funding as per the CPR website. We've taken this from the website. We don't believe in WhatsApp research. We've gone to the website and we've removed this. Uh, Indian Council of Social Sciences Research, Bill Melinda Gates Foundation. He's right now in India being feted. They are also donors. William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, MacArthur Foundation, of course, Namathi. Um, we have um, uh, the Oak Foundation, the Ministry of Jal Shakti, UNICEF, Government of Meghalaya is also one of the donors to this organization. So is the Government of Andhra Pradesh, so is World Bank, so is Rohini Nilikani. So now, Karan Varma, I want you to come in because, you know, the facts are important. Yes, there is a George Soros link. We illuminated that, but that absolutely, absolutely. organization is one of many. And there are some very, very well-respected names on that list. Are you going to paint them all with the same brush? Yes, your response. I did not. I did not do that. But Tamanna, one dubious donor is too many. Do you think we can risk our security that way? I am all I'm saying is this NGO hasn't been cancelled. Foreign funding has been temporarily halted for 180 days. They can always get relief from the court. I am not casting mm. aspersions on all the donors, but surely I am not one of those citizens who are going to be in deep slumber after I know the nefarious designs of Open Society Foundation. And the, uh, the gentleman just said noble thoughts should 
come from all directions. Of course they should, but not biased thoughts which have an agenda to break our nation. Those thoughts are that, not that, welcome. That Look is for the, the people of, of India reports. to decide. Uh, Tamanna, that I want is to for read the people them out. of, of the India reports. to decide. It's we the people. Of let him finish. finish. Madhavan, let no, him but finish. But we can't be nice sitting in the Sir. No, no, no. Just, Karan Varma, let, let Karan Varma let, let finish me. his point and then we'll get more voices. We can't. In. Yes, Karan. We can't be naive sitting ducks when we see an agenda clearly written. No, no, you were talking about reports, reports that you found. CPR, you were talking about Center reports that you research. found. It casts yeah, aspersions. Just, just yeah. hear me out. Just, just, just let me complete. 30 seconds, that's all. They've cast aspersions on our homegrown vaccines. They've said India is not safe for Muslims and Dalits. They've said the, the Prime Minister has lost confidence of the people. They've said India is a crony capitalist and they've hailed the Hindenburg report even though they've cast aspersions on our own local agencies. Adani has faced investigations from SEBI, from Karnatak Lokayukt and all so many. The appellate tribunal which was challenged in the Supreme Court, they've paintbrushed that and come up with an agenda to hail a foreign report to make sure that India is demonized as a nation which will be in the dumps even though we are one of the brightest okay. spots of an economy I'm glad you, of I'm glad you so mentioned all of this. one can see an agenda. One minute. I'm, all I'm okay, saying I, is, I got it, I got it. Yes. I'm glad you, you mentioned all of this because, one minute, I'm going to go to Mr. Chaudhary and widen the debate because then uh, all opposition should be cancelled in this country. <laughs> a lot of them exactly. have echoed the same thing. Let's cancel everyone. Has it been cancelled? All the reports you've mentioned... Has it been cancelled? Tamanna, has it no, been cancelled? No, no, I'm saying if that is your reasoning, Karan, I'm not saying that should is be your cancelled. reasoning, you, if that, you know how many people have cast aspersions on vaccines every day? And not just the Indian vaccine, all vaccines, people are saying... Dekho, sab Am I saying they should be cancelled? I'm just saying that saying what is your reasoning? Can this be the reasoning or I, is no, it no, if there I'm is a saying... violation of the law? Okay, I'm going to get Mr. Chaudhary to respond. Mr. Chaudhary, yeah. if there is a violation of the law, you cannot have kid gloves. Saying CPR or XYZ is so great. If there is a violation of the law, there is a violation of the law. It's as simple as that. Yeah, Tamana, first things first. You know, uh, people like Karan Varma and uh, his th school of thought, they will always say that any criticism of the Modi government or the government policies or its think tank will be direct attack on the nation on direct attack on India. That is a narrative they have been peddling for the past so many years. I am one of his biggest critics. And we have been seeing it. And I we have am been one seeing of his it. biggest critics, sir. So please, please let me respond. You have responded so long. I have listened patiently to you. Now, you know something. This particular law of FCRA sure, was sure, sure. inducted uh, by Indira Gandhi herself in 1970s. It was re-amended during Manmohan Singh's time. Even Karan Varma has rightly pointed out how Manmohanji has criticized the foreign hands installing the nuclear power plant in uh, Kudam, uh, the Tamil Nadu. So basically the point is that there has been a paradigm shift from 2014 till 2023. Over these years, in 2015 alone, the Modi government has cancelled the FCRA license of around 15,000 NGOs. In the last three years, they have cancelled the FCRA license of 6,600 NGOs. And out of which, Tamanna, you will be surprised that around 70% of those NGOs were educational institutions. Now, you know, people like Karan Varma and his school of thought will always want us to research on Vedic I, I, uh, I, I, In, in Karan process. Varma's defense, he's been invited here for his views. So, uh, you know, it's, I understand. it's not... I understand. Don't target him personally. He's coming Thank here you. for his views, no, I which is also reflecting views of some of the viewers. Yeah, we, yeah. The, our attempt here is to is to reflect the debate in one, society. One small point. No, so, let me and finish. We have, to, let me finish. we have to we have to let admit that one the debate point. in society is also polarized. Yes. Tamanna. Yeah, let me finish, please. Tamanna. Okay, now the point that Tamanna, I was in trying to drive out here is that the ecosystem. Karan, one when minute. The let party. Mr. Chaudhary finish his point. No, no. Let Karan. Let one Mr. Second. Chaudhary finish one his second. point, please. Let him finish okay. his point. Ten seconds. Let him finish okay. his point. No. Okay. The point here okay. is that the ecosystem will always want us to believe that the research that has to happen in our universities, in our think tanks, has to be based on manuskriti, has to be based on the thought process of the right-wing ideologies that exist in our country, that has not got to amalgamate the thought processes from around the world. 
We have seen institutes okay. being attacked because of their thought processes not aligning with the right wing. I'm forces talking about non-profits today. Now I'm here. talking about non-profits today. I'm going to restrict it to that, and I'm going to get Anurag Naidu's views. Karan, One I know you're waiting, but let yeah. Anurag Naidu has not even spoken yet. Ten Let seconds. me get his views in. Ten seconds. I know everyone wants to cut. Just ten okay, seconds. Anurag, I'll leave it to Just you. Ten Do seconds. you want Karan to take his ten seconds? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's giving... better Karan speaks for ten, ten seconds. seconds. Otherwise, he'll interrupt. Anurag, me ten again. seconds. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Thank Anurag you. is being Thank gracious. So okay, he's ceded his time to Th you. Yes, for 10 seconds. Yes. Thank you. Tamanna, in 2012, the then Congress government, Mr. Kamru Zaman is waxing eloquent here. In 2012, they cancelled 4,132 FCRA licenses. At that time, dissent wasn't being crushed. They were the paragons of democracy back then. So this is their hypocrisy. No, it was. That is their duplicity. No, That's what I wanted to point no, you're out. You're right. You're right. All governments love laws like this. All governments love laws like this. We have to ask questions as citizens. I talked about, I talked about what are some of the reasons why you can cancel a license. And I'm going to play that on screen. Some of the violations, these include anything which is in public interest. Now, that is broad enough for anyone to interpret as they wish. And remember, we in the beginning of the show talked about the antecedents of FCRA, which is from emergency time. Ki foreign hand is trying to influence India. Anurag Naidu, frankly, the question we should ask is, today in this global economy in 2023, when you know global finance is such a huge part, we're talking today about UPI being used in all G20 countries. That's how close-knit yeah. the world is. Does an act like FCRA still make sense? Or is it being used by successive governments as a stick to beat those whose voice they don't like? Absolutely. No, I think, uh, Tamanna, I have a very clear opinion about it. Uh, having associated and running, having being experience of running an uh, organization, I myself have FCRAs, and we've, uh, we've been, uh, you know, in, into this uh, business of doing non-profit charitable uh, uh, contributions to the society. I would say it's absolutely needed. And in fact, uh, after 2014, there have been a lot of voices against uh, the government for regulating FCRS, tightening it further. And every time, the, the finance minister has made very rational statements and also articulated very well in the parliament and outside the parliament on how this stringent uh, FCRA rules and tightening rules have, have resulted into a lot of good things for India, not just economically, but also from a social balance point of view. We know we have a lot of missionary, we have these problems of conversion in South India. There are a lot of other social issues. We cannot just brush it under the carpet of white supremacy. I, I quote it again, white supremacy. And why do I say that? We've seen the same case during the BBC. This because survey was conducted even in CPR, Five months back, the surveys were conducted. They, they were under scanner, and they have been uh, taken action because they were not under the. Uh, you, they were not following the rules. What has white the supremacy the, the, got to do with CPR? One minute, and Anurag, I can't I, understand. I'll tell you. I'll, I'm what coming has white to that. supremacy got to, got to do with CPR? I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. If you let me speak, I'm coming to that. Uh, I've been on several new channels this morning. They've, I've seen people telling. Oh, CPR is somebody who has been funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You're, you're, you're kind of saying, oh, George Soros, you're making him hero. You're saying all, all the foreign companies who have been associated with CPR. Does that mean that CPR becomes there sacrosanct two state for governments of India also. as per the rule One of land? Anurag, there, there are two state you should, you governments of India quote, also. You have, Jai I'll Shakti you that, department I'm also. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that point. Um, that does not, I'm telling you. That does not take away from the fact. I'm not discrediting the credentials of CPR in any manner, like Karan Bama or did. I'm not discrediting. I, all I'm telling is you have yourself share, told in the start of the show, Tamanna, is that one of the points, reasons why the government can also cancel FCRA is in the opinion of the central government, if it is necessary in the public interest to cancel the certificate, they can do it. It is well within the rights of the central government to take action. They have taken it. They can go for an appeal. It is a matter of small compliances. And if you cannot fulfill the compliances and the regulatory requirements, and if you want to say, oh, Rajiv Gandhi is associated, some other guy is associated, Palana no, so, is associated, so today, and that's why I'm So today, today the, attitude, facts on, the, the facts of, of the case today, one minute, Anurag, let's, let's, let's be more specific. First of all, I just want to add, I, I know you're saying you've been on all channels through the day. What is talked there is really of zero relevance here. We do things our way. You look at the research that goes into our programming and we put facts. 
on the table and we give everyone a chance to come prepared and talk about their facts. So just that little preface over there. So what are the channels saying? I, I, it doesn't really matter. But you as someone who runs, you're saying an organization and has an FCRA license, don't you think that the reasons for cancellation or suspension should be more specific and exactly. objective instead of subjective? Because governments change. We're talking about this rule from emergency times. Karan Varma has just shared that UPA shut Not down 4,000 NGOs. Maybe they didn't like what they said. We're talking about Not norms which pass the test of time. Today, you may be, you know, thinking that your NGO is not going to face all of this because you have a certain view. I don't know. But, you know, if you are doing this with a charitable intent or a non-profit intent, wouldn't you want yourself clearer guidelines which are not open to interpretation by whoever is in power, Anurag Naidu? When I, when I hear such argument, Tamanna, I honestly feel that this is an argument of convenience. You know, it's not, not everything an argument. in the it's world a question. can be a binary. It's not an argument. Uh, I've asked you a pointed question. Do you have a pointed I'm, answer? I'm to that. Absolutely, I have a pointed answer. I see that you cannot be, every time you cannot be very objective when it comes to the rules and the guidelines because India is a very diverse country and you 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 really don't, I mean, most of the time a, you can. Frankly, it's a yes or no answer. Can, but there is also, Anurag, it's a yes or no answer. Do you it, want it rules that are more subjective. Uh, sub objective or subjective? It's a yes I or think, no I answer. Think, I think I think it has to be a mix of both. I, you cannot put words in my mouth, okay. but it has to be a mix of both. And I see that. No, no, I'm waiting right for words path. to come out of your mouth, which is finished, I'm, you know, which I'm, is finalizing I'm, this I'm argument, sir. I'm why not putting I, words I, in your mouth. I'm giving you simpler, I, I feel, multiple choice I question. Feel, yes, no. I feel, okay. I feel I feel it has to be subjective and objective both, and I've answered that. And I think uh, India okay. has a very Anurag good right balance. Anurag says it's of valid. I, I suppose the the underlying uh, point is that Anurag thinks it's valid. Okay, Madhavan, yes, you wanted to come in. Yeah, I want to come in on two points, Tamanna. First is that, as you rightly said, public interest is cannot be a simple transient responsibility of one ad hoc decision by anyone sitting in power. It has to be based on objective guidelines under the constitutional's guide guiding principles, not on any ideology. Please note that even nationalism is only an ideology. It is not constitutionalism which stands above nationalism of any kind. The other thing is that uh, we as journalists must be very careful of the officially stated objectives. We have to look beyond the headline. That is what your own program's title has been. So we have to look at the uh, likely intent based on context and circumstances. And I don't like the idea of the word NGO or civil society itself being discredited by everyone being painted with the same brush and flimsy logic being invoked to essentially curtail or restrict or use what I call the four I policy, uh, insinuation, innuendo, intimidation, and imagery. This is being used. This is typical of authoritarian states and uh, please understand okay. the law. Quick Huge response from Karan Varma. I'm actually one, over time, Karan, but point. I'm giving one you last 10 point. seconds. Subjective or objective? It should be clear, it should be transparent. As of today, I don't have the official reasons for the suspension of this license. Remember, all of this George Soros link, etc., is all in the realm of speculation. I want to make that very clear to the viewers. We don't have any clear, you know, communication of why and what those violations are, what the reasons are. Having said that, should there be transparency? If there is a need to take action by law, take it. Should it be clear Absolutely. why? Absolutely. I agree. We, and it, it should has be, be far more transparent than what it is. I concede that. That, that. that has to be transparent. But Tamanna, national security is paramount. Let's not turn a blind eye to a nefarious mm. design unfolding. Most of the catastrophes that have ever occurred are because people were sitting ducks. So today when we know that there is a George Soros angle to it, we must tread this path with caution. You may call it okay. hard nationalism or whatever, but paramount is national security and the sovereignty of our country. You know, I, 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 we've discussed this before on the show, but this 90-year-old George Soros uh, may be flattered if uh, he's considered a threat to a great nation like India. 
uh, and his words are taken that seriously. I don't know if anyone else really in the West even does. But having said that, this is a very interesting story to see where it goes further. I want to thank all of you for joining us on the show and having this very important debate. We'll take a very short break. On the other side, I'm talking about the G20 meet in Delhi. It's an important one. Foreign ministers are all there under India's presidency. The elephant in the room, of course, the Ukraine-Russia war. What will happen when the foreign ministers of the US, Russia and China sit in the same room? I'm coming back with that conversation after this break.